there was a major campaign uh, for the last presidential election. It was called Vote or Die. Uh, I would modify that to say invest or, or Atlanta's economy and the national economy is going to shrivel up and die. Right. Invest or die. The economy will not continue to grow. And we see that. Um, we see the competition coming from around the world. Other people are investing in education, in water, in infrastructure, in airports, uh, in wage rates, uh, in rehabilitation of prisoners and, and convicted um, felons. Other people are investing. Uh, we can't afford uh, to leave not a single solitary person behind. I come back to water, water, water everywhere. Clearly, the federal government needs to assist cities in the water infrastructure. Uh, in the 1970s, the federal government matched uh, water and sewer infrastructure. Local gave local governments 75 percent of every dollar that they needed to to build water and sewer systems. Today, we get pennies on the dollar um, of what we need. Uh, to build water infrastructure at a time when we are experiencing uh, a shortage of water. We in Atlanta are willing to pay our, more than our fair share. The water and sewer rates in Atlanta are among the highest in the country. We tax ourselves with a one cent sales tax uh, in order to fund water infrastructure. And we get some um, federal funding, but nowhere near the hundreds of millions of dollars that we need. I would hope that Katrina is, is, is seen as a mistake of how things happen. Whether it's Rita or Katrina or the hurricanes along the Gulf Coast, um, clearly we have to have a better response time. But equally important, we have to build better water infrastructure. Um, when we know that we're building infrastructure that is destroying um, the natural barriers, uh, and, 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 and we're not taking care of uh, the, the physical infrastructure. We've just got to get smarter about it. Uh, not just lives lost. I mean, people lost their lives. But in addition to that, a whole section of our country that is uh, economically deprived and depressed. Uh, many people say it's coming back, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't take for granted that the infrastructure we built 100 years ago or 75 years ago uh, can withstand um, the climate shifts, uh, the economic uh, shifts, uh, can withstand just the pressure on, um, on that infrastructure forever. I mean, we're replacing water lines in Atlanta that would put, drinking water lines that were put in the ground in 1895. What were we thinking? I can tell you that we don't get money for bridges, we don't, we don't get sufficient money for transit, we don't get sufficient money for water and sewer infrastructure. Um, we are stuck on, um, we're just stuck on whether we're going to even fund health care for children. I am certainly looking forward to the election in 2008 to help unstick us, to unglue us, to get us some momentum through the campaign and the debate and uh, and then in Congress, uh, under the leadership of a, of a dynamic and uh, president who will take these issues one at a time and help to get America back on track. Clearly, we need an urban agenda. We need an agenda that speaks to the issues of where people congregate for most of their lives, working, living, uh, and in learning. So somehow or another we need a national agenda around urban, urban affairs. And I would look forward to uh, the candidates, all of them from both parties, um, speaking to the urban issues. And I think I'm joined by every mayor, um, regardless of party or party affiliation, um, in saying that. It's very frustrating, but I mean, there is the possibility that um, before the day, before the sun sets on the election, that we will have some rigorous debate about cities.